Hey guys, I want to talk today about retopology in Blender just because someone left a comment in another video where we spoke about retopology in Maya and uh, they were asking if it's possible to do the same thing in Blender and the answer is yes and it's very easy. We have a model in here which is just like a high res sculpt. What I want to do first is activate the snapping and set it to face project. Next thing I'll do is I will add a plane in here and I will just collapse everything to a vertex and I'll grab it, I'll put it in here. And now I can just extrude this and take this edge and extrude this edge. And we'll really have like a face snapped in there. But obviously this is not very nice to see. It's not very comfortable to use this in this way. So what I'm going to do now is I'll go into my object here in the viewport display and click in front. And I will also click in the color so I can change the color of the object. I will change also the transparency. All right, so we can see through it. The thing that we saw in the Maya video is that we could work on this and have like a different, a separate window where we could see just the object being subdivided and wrapped around this. Let's just call this object like retopology. This step is not really necessary. You could just work on one single object like I have here, but I want to do the same thing as we did in the Maya video. So I'll just make an instance of this object pressing Alt D. I'll, le I'll leave it there. And this can be just like instance or whatever it is. So now I move this away and I go into components. See, whatever I do to one it happens to the other one as well. All right, let's undo this, bring it here. So now on this instance object, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign a subdivision surface modeling uh, modifier. And now also, if we want to see this shrink wrap to the model, we need to add another modifier, shrink wrap. And now we're going to take this object as the target object. We're going to tell it to project on it both negative and positive, right? So the moment is hard to tell what's happening, but fear not. What we're going to do next is we're going to just take this, grab a second screen in here, and I can just isolate this object. And now we can see it in here, right? We could even take this object and make it non-transparent and maybe even a different color so it's easier to see what is what. Something like this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my first object and the head where I want to do the topology and just isolate these two as well, or these three in this case, with the t-shirt. We can just hide the t-shirt. Next thing I want to do is I want to link those two views so that I can always do the same in one camera and see it in the other one. I have a camera created in here, so the only thing I need to do now is just go into camera view, in camera view, in, those, in both views. And that's pretty much it. So now whatever I do on this, this is going to replicate it and get shrink wrap around, around this. I can even increase the number of subdivisions at any single time and see what's happening. So now we're ready to start the topology. So I'll go into component mode. And I use this tool in here a lot where you can just click and drag things, right? That I can just extrude edges by clicking and dragging. And again, you can just see in here how everything is adapting to the mesh that we have, right? So now it's just a matter of trying and work with you, the right topology, which is the, the tricky part, actually, right? Uh, for me, what I like to do is work with big polygons, large polygons like this, and try and make everything fairly regular, fairly nice and clean. Now, if I hold down control, I can just click and drag from, from a vertex, right? Just do that. And you see what we're getting in here is pretty pretty nice already. But yeah, it's very easy to just keep doing this, right? And you see how it keeps adapting all the time to whatever you're doing there. We can also add a mirror modifier. Let's add it first thing. We need to activate the bisect so they, they will cut and merge. And that's it. And now we can just start having fun with this. And it's just like a very easy way. And this is how I normally work, like defining big planes first, bit areas of the model. Trying to get those um, directions, right? Those loops in the right direction. 
but by using like very large polygons it's then very easy to correct things and to to tweak things later let's go something like this And again, don't worry too much at first, you know, you can always add loops and refine, etc, etc. But yeah, again, super quick, very, very quick feedback, very quick way to start creating things. And then if you want to add extra loops, just control R for the cut, and then we can just keep moving things. So yeah, notice how in, in just a few minutes we already have something decent looking. And again, I, I know that a lot of people, they enjoy doing a lot of smaller quads. Let's say, for example, right, a lot of people will start with, oops, made a mistake in there. Very small quads. And do this and this and this and work with very small triangles, but... It's like a very slow process and then it's very slow to, if you want to change the flow of the mesh, it's a very difficult thing to do because you have such a large topology. But if you keep things fairly minimal like this, it's just very easy to update things. Also, something I do is I'll go in here and click on the auto merge. And then whenever I click and drag onto another vertex, it should merge. If it doesn't happen, you can just increase the volume, the, the threshold in there. I think this scene is very, big so let's try 10 see what happens there you go but yeah this is how normally i work and again it's just very easy to you can also come in here with the cut tool for example oops let's do it in here i can cut this something more like that and again you can have feedback in real time with what you're doing So yeah, basically this is how I, I tend to work in, in Blender. And again, you can always add extra loops if you need to. Okay, very easy. All right. Oh, we move this guy. There you go. Yeah, and then let's say, for example, let me just carry on with this for a couple more loops in here. Let's say we do something like this. Don't mind my nasty topology at the moment. I'm just playing with it, having some fun, but you know, not really paying attention to the loops. It's just like a quick example on how I tend to do things. And now what you can even do is once, let's say you're done, you can take this guy in here. You can even go higher with subdivisions. If you get this crazy vertices spiking, you can come into the shrink wrap and you can give it a limit on the projection. So for example, if I put one, you see, it's not projecting, it's just limiting to one centimeter. Let's put 50, you see? So these guys now, they're a, a lot less spiky. But you see in here, it's still, we need to add more distance. So let's try 100, there you go. Okay, let's try and take this, perhaps add one more loop in here. And try to sort this out. And maybe we can just add a supporting loop in here. You see how things are adapting a bit better. Okay, yeah, something like this. You could try and even just, just for playing, add some support loop in here, just for fun. And maybe one less in here, just again for fun. Well, I don't like that. Perhaps I could just cut from here. Let's try that, see what happens very quickly. We can just cut this, put that in here. No, I like that. Actually, yeah, we can maybe do this. All right, you get the idea anyway. And at, at any given time, things are still adapting and working. Right. So now the only thing you have to do, let's say this is our model in here already with the topology. We can just take this. We can apply all these modifiers. Apply. Sure. It's just telling you that this is an instance. And if you want to convert it into a single object, you can apply this. You can apply this. 
Now the only thing you need to do is go into generate, add a multi-resolution, and you can just unsubdivide. There you go, and you can reach your uh, original, actually, one. Yeah, oops. There you go, unsubdivide. And at some point, you know, obviously this is a, let me just hide this guy, take this. This is a very low res mesh, uh, but at some point you could just collapse this into something nicer like this. You know, it's very easy to work in retopology when you work with very low detail. And then you just divide. And of course, now that this is a multi-res, you can just let's maximize this. We can do sculpting, and you can just yeah keep refining your model with good topology. Actually, I believe the normals are inverted. You can come in here, face orientation. You see, yeah. And now we could just take all of the faces, Alt N, and just flip these guys. Yeah. And we can go into sculpting now. So yeah, a very quick video. I hope this was useful. Um, it's again, very simple process. And yeah, I hope that was useful for you guys. Uh, please uh, drop a comment. If you have any questions, let us know. Leave a comment down below. And uh, thank you for watching.